Assalamualaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on ASP.NET 4.5 for students of King Faisal University and for others who want to learn ASP.NET. This is part 3 in this series entitled Building Your First ASP.NET Website. If you've just continued from our second tutorial, your Visual Studio 2012 is already open with our website 1. If not, open Visual Studio 2012 by clicking Start, All Programs, Microsoft Visual Studio 2012, Visual Studio 2012. To create our first website, click File, New, Website. Make sure that you choose ASP.NET Empty Website. The template is Visual C Sharp. And then click OK. By looking at the Solution Explorer, we can see that our project named Website 1 has only one file, that is web.conp. Let's confirm it in our Explorer. Documents. Visual Studio 2012, Websites, there's our project, Website 1, and there's that file, web.config, and it's correct. We will create our first web page by right-clicking Website 1, clicking Add, and Add New Item. Make sure that you are always in Visual C Sharp. We're going to add our first web form, or our first web page, and the name of that is default. Look at the extension, ASPX. Click Add. Notice the three tabs below, Design, Split, and Source. We can create our website or web form by dragging components in the design or by coding in the source. Split allows us to view both. So let's try using the Split view and click the Split tab. Click inside the Deep tag in the source window above and type my first ASP.NET website. Then click anywhere in the design. Notice that the text already appeared as well. Now press the Enter key while in the design and type another statement. Thank you for visiting this site. Notice that as I type, the text are also appearing in the source window. Let's see the output by clicking Run and selecting run without debugging. Okay, the shortcut is Control F5. So we have the same result. Now let's look at the source. Tools, view source. Now notice that there are already some small differences between this default.aspx and our original default.aspx. Close the browser. Now let's select the first line in the design view and click the bold format icon. Notice the changes that are occurring always in the source code. Now let's change the font, the font size to double extra large. Now this time it's different. See this style? It's a CSS style. A cascading style sheet has already been added in the source window. This is something that we will learn further in our later tutorials. Click the Design tab for us to take advantage of a bigger area in the screen. Click on the line below the last text and press Enter. Type, here are some things that I can do in ASP.NET. Colon, Enter again. Now click the toolbox and try to pin it and double-click the label component it appears on the last line. Because it's an object, it has properties and even events. It also has a name. Right now, in the properties window, it's called label1. One of its properties is the text, and the current value is label. Let's change it to, I can add a label object, enter. Now let's go to the source and see how it was added there. The ID is label 1 and there's the text. Now let's go back to the design. Click after the label object and press the enter key. Then double click the button component. Again, because it's an object, it has properties and events. The name of this button is button 1 and the current text is button. 
let's change the value to I can add a button object and let's go to the source and see how it was added there and then also the text let's try to run it in the browser press ctrl f5 and see if there's any difference in the source tools and view source now notice here that you don't see the ASP tags anymore and instead for the label it was changed to the span tag for HTML notice also that there is no ASP button tag anymore and instead it was changed to the input for the form now close the browser go back to the design so why does our default.aspx become different when it is already run in the browser? When we call our ASPX page in our browser, the web server processes the page and transforms that ASP.NET markup into plain HTML. It's like when we are typing the address kfu.edu.sa in the web browser and presses enter, the browser sends a request to the web server and the web server accepts the request if it's valid, processes it, and sends back to the client browser an HTML format document. There are three things that an ASPX page contains, static text, ASP.NET Server Controls, and Programming Code. Those ASP.NET Server Controls and Programming Code are changed by the web server into an HTML format. To make this more clear, Click the last line of our web form and double click the calendar component or object. Now look at this, it's February, February 1 to February 28, but it also includes some days from the past month, that is January 27 to 31, and the next month, uh, March 1 to March 9. Now let's go to the source and see how it was written. There, using the tag ASP calendar. Now let's go back to the design. We will run it now in our web browser using Control F5. Remember that when we do that, we are already requesting, sending a request to the server to process it because of this ASP tags. The server will process it and will respond by sending us an HTML document. Okay, let's do it now. Let's press Control F5. So the server has already processed it, and this is already his response. His response is this HTML document. The same from January 27 up to March 9. That is why if we look at the source code, we will no longer see those ASP tags. And instead, we will see this lot of text and Looking at the calendar, it started on January 27, January 27, and ended on March 9, on March 9, correct. Let's go back. Now, look at this button. It means go to the next month. If we click this button, we are again requesting something to the server. So we are sending a request to the server, and the server will process it. And then after that, the response will be a new HTML document. So let's try it. Let's click this button. So we are now in the month of March. March 1 to March 31. It, it also includes uh, some days from the previous month, February 24 to 28, and some days for the next month, April 1 to April 6. Now, if you look at the source, Again, it becomes an HTML document. And our calendar started on February 24 and ended on April 6. Well, congratulations. We just finished creating our first ASP.NET website and learned how it works. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Masalama.